Hi, this is Lady Lex UK and this is a dreams tutorial. I've been asked many times to make an inventory system and let me just say inventory systems are very difficult to make. They are very time consuming, take up lots of gadgets, um, a lot of brain power to try and work out uh, a system and they're not that easy to explain, certainly not to beginners and so um, I've sort of avoided doing it, but I think um, now's the time to start looking at um, inventory systems and ways to make it. So um, I've also been asked, how do you pick up and drop a sword uh, and carry a sword between levels and that sort of thing? So I'm going to address both of those things and I'm going to build on this over time. So we're going to start off with just this sword and we're going to build up an inventory system uh, with menus and selectors and all sorts of things over time so we're not going to do that in this tutorial in this tutorial i'm just going to show you um a pick up and drop sword mechanic so um let's see what i've built so i've got my my player uh, it says top right i've got no sword but if i walk over to the sword here it's got a triangle above it so i can pick it up with a triangle and now i've got a sword equipped in my hand um so when i've got a sword equipped i can't run because it's dangerous to run with a sword so I've set it so that if he has a sword in his hand, he can't do any running. If, however, he wants to run, he can put the sword in his backpack by pressing L1. And now he can run around as much as he likes. Um, if I want to stab someone, obviously having the sword in my inventory is no good. I need to have it in my hand. So I put it back in my hand and press R2 and I can stab people with it. I haven't put in any combat mechanics to actually make that sword um, dangerous, but um, that's not what this tutorial is about. This is just about um, the inventory side of it. So there's extra to be done to make this uh, an active sword. Um, and once it's equipped, I can then drop it by pressing R1. And um, it drops it. Sometimes it drops it just straight down. Sometimes it does this little twirly thing. But anyway, there we go. There's our sword. And then we can drop it like that. It's random how it actually lands, actually. There we go. So, let's have a look. How did I build it? First of all, I went into the Dreamverse and found myself a nice sword. So I'd like to thank Lucifer82 for his very nice um, Japanese-style sword with a black lacquer hand up, a handle. Very nice. Um, you'll need three copies of this sword. One of them is going to be acting as the sword you pick up. One is going to be the one in your hand. And one is going to be the one on the back if you're not going to have a visual inventory if it's just going to go into the inventory then uh, you don't need the the sword here um you can just um uh, you, you just don't have it so um I'm just, i've made it a little bit more complicated for myself by having the visual representation of the sword uh, on my character but if you don't have that then you don't need that extra sword right uh what you do is you take your sword and you need to scope into the hand like this make sure the hand is the only thing that is selected place it in the puppet's hand like so there we go and you'll need to make sure that it is uh, non-collidable so unselect all of the collidable um, tags and um, also uh, we're going to make this um, invisible but don't do that yet uh, we're going to do that in a minute right so you've you've uh, you've set up your sword okay scope out and now I want you to create a keyframe and open up the sword again so scope into the sword and you want to make it invisible then visible again so you want it to have little cross lines going through it and lit up right press record and then make the sword invisible so we scope right out so we've now got a keyframe here and if I was to turn the visibility off, you'll see it is an invisible sword. This keyframe will make that visible. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to make our sword visible when we need it to be. As well as visible, 
you will probably want to make it collidable. So we're just going to edit our keyframe, go back into this. And we're going to make it collidable with foe. So it will collide with foe. There we go. So now we've got a keyframe ready to go for when we need it. And you do the same with the one on the back. Create your keyframe, then make your sword invisible. Right, here is our microchip. And this is going to be attached to the sword we're going to pick up. So attach it to the sword. And we've got inside it um, a tag called collectible. I'm going to use this method for most of my collectible objects from now on. I find it is the most effective. So I've got a tag called collectible. And that when that is active, that's going to display our triangle. And that is affected by a trigger zone, which is inside our puppet. So I've opened up the controller logic and there's our trigger zone there. It's um, centered around our player and it's looking for the tag collectible. So when it finds our tag, so when you're standing near the, the sword, it's going to show the text display to say, um, press triangle. So back over to here, this is saying, okay, so if I'm standing in the trigger zone, so you can see the press triangle option, and then you press the triangle button, I'm then going to send a transmitter, transmission to pick up the sword. So there's a transmitter. I've named it pick up. And then in my sword, I've got a wireless receiver and that is set to pick up any transmission within this range. So from the player, so when he's right next to it, when it's received the, the uh, message to pick up the sword, it then got a variable modifier. This is going to change a variable we've called sword. It's going to set it when it's powered on, so just the once, to a, a one. And then it's going to destroy the sword. Now our variable, here's our variable, is in this microchip. This variable is called sword. I've set it as initial value of zero, minimum value of zero, and a maximum value of three. Right. So uh, what this is telling us is the status of the sword. So zero is the sword lying on the ground here. One is the sword in the player's hand. Two is the sword on the player's back or in the inventory. And uh, we haven't got a, a three for the sword. So that's the only option. So it can either be on the ground, in his hand or on his back. Um, some objects might require another output, so uh, it might be a destroyed item or um, a used item. Something like a key, for example. A key could be in the world, in your backpack, in your hand or in a door, for example. So you might have more than one set. You might have extra settings for, for those sort of objects. But for the sword, we've only got zero, one or two. And that's the status of the sword. OK, so um, we've picked up our sword. So what's happened is it's gone from zero. This is the current value, which is going into this selector to its active port. So zero is showing the text of no sword. When it uh, changes to one, it then activates this OR gate. This OR gate is looking to see if the output is B or C, which is if the player has got the sword. And then it's turning on this selector. Now this selector is deciding whether or not he is, uh, he's got the sword in his hand or he's got the sword in his inventory. Um, and we've wired up B to be A and C to be B. So here is our sword equipped and on back. So if you remember, we made a keyframe earlier on. This is when we're going to use those. So that is the keyframe we made for the sword in his hand. 
So that would be the sword equipped one um, there. So that's the keyframe for that. So that's making the sword visible and collidable to foes. Uh, one thing I forgot to show you um, is that in the keyframe for the sword equipped, as well as making the sword invisible and uh, collidable um, with foes, uh, it also, when I go into the blank puppet, you can see it also changes the run speed to zero. So the player cannot run uh, when the sword is equipped. And so you can use these keyframes for more than one thing. They don't have to do just one thing. They can do lots of things. They can um, handle visibility. They can uh, move keyframes. They can change all the settings. It can change the color of things. And you can do them all in one keyframe. So when this sword is equipped, it not only affects the uh, visibility of this sword, but it also affects his running power. And you can use um, that technique to do anything you want um, for an equipped object. Now, people have asked me, what if I had a magical object equipped and I had a special skill? This is how you would do it. So you um, so when you have it selected and it's in your hand, then from A, you can uh, attach a microchip, which runs your special spell ability, um, your growth ability, any anything that you like. This is how you would do it. Um, so there we go. There's some extras and uh, that that I can add into this inventory system, and and I, I'd probably end up with a whole RPG if I'm not careful. But um, there you are. And we've also got a variable modifier that says the sword should be set to be number one, which is I've got it equipped. Then B is exactly the same, except this time it's turning the visibility of the. Um, sword on his back on if you don't want the the object to be visible um you just don't have this you just have the number the variable modifier sword so we have a sword this time it's being set to the number two which is i've got it in my inventory and here we have a controller sensor with an l1 button linked to uh, the next output. So this is going from A to B to A to B to A to B as you press the L1 button. So it's swapping from the back to the hand, from the back to the hand within this selector. Now over here, we are, we've are we got a node that is looking to see if it's equipped. So we, we've got a wire coming from B, uh, not, not from B, sorry, from A, all the way from A, um, into our player's node here that says equipped. So now we're looking to see with some AND gates. So is it equipped? And then the player presses R2. Then we've got the sword swing. So we put a timeline in here with our, our animation of our sword swing. I've just done very simple two frame backwards and forwards stabbing motion. You could have something a lot more complicated in there. And then if it's equipped and then you press the R1 button, then this is going to change the sword status to zero. So no longer in the player's hand. And then we're going to emit a sword. So now we're going to need a copy of this micro this uh, whole sword with its microchip so make a copy of your sword and then you are going to emit that sword so um here it is here it's being emitted in front of the player so you you put the sword where you want the sword to appear um, i'm going to put it in front of him like this and i've set the emit speed to nothing and set it to do it once one you want the emitted object lifetime to be um, infinity uh, maximum emitted to be infinity but uh, you want one uh, emitted at a time so uh, that's going to emit and this is mean the sword that you're going to have from now on so this sword is only used to initially to pick up after that um, you're using this emitted sword 
And that's basically it. Now the other thing that I've done um, is that I've made these swords movable so that they will drop with the graph with the um, gravity. If you didn't have that on, let me just um, change that so they're not movable. I'll stick my sword in the ground like that. Um, this is going to be difficult. Uh, ba -ba -ba -boom. I don't think I can fiddle about with it once it's been emitted. So I'm going to have to take the object off of emit by pressing triangle. Then go in. Then make it non-movable. Uh, then go back into the emitter and choose it again. Um, there we go. So this is what happens if you don't make it movable. So we've got a sword stuck in the ground here. Press triangle. We can still do the same stuff. But when we drop it, it's stuck in the ground like that. It doesn't fall to the ground so it's entirely up to you i mean maybe that 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 works for you and you um you want it so that it stands up right like this if you drop it like so um that's fine um there is a, there is a tendency for it to spin off and do weird things when it's uh, a movable object and you might have a problem with too many movable objects in your in your level um this is a way around it you can um just make this non-movable and have the sword so it's sticking out of the ground uh, it works. It works perfectly fine. Um, because, of course, you're not actually equipping that actual sword. This is a fake sword, if you like, that's already in his hand. So that is how... Um, that is how we do our inventory system. And now I'm going to build on this gradually so that we're going to be able to pick up other things and have more more variables and have a menu that so you can select what you have equipped in your hand maybe you've got multiple weapons and that sort of thing so um this is sort of stage one if you like so i hope that was useful for you thank you for watching and i'll catch you in your dreams <laughs>